Last year, right as people were really starting to grapple with pandemic life, Google made the decision to cancel its 2020 IO developer conference entirely. And we can't blame them. This year though, IO is back, just in a different form. The online event is set to kick off on May 18th, and right now, all signs point to it being a pretty big one. Sundar Pichai himself said during an Alphabet earnings call that the show would feature significant product updates and announcements, but what was he talking about exactly? Well, we don't know everything Google has in store for IO 2021, but we do have some educated guesses and a few things we're hoping against hope to see. Let's dive in. If there's one thing you can count on this year, it's that Google will have a lot to say about its upcoming Android 12 update at the show. And that's especially unsurprising when you consider just how much the company has already said about it. As I'm shooting this video, Google has already released three Android 12 developer previews and has begun talking of features like audio coupled haptics, improved picture in picture for videos, support for the AVIF image format, plus a lot more. Beyond that though, it also looks like Android is getting a facelift this year, though it's hard to say exactly what it will ultimately look like. A series of leaked images obtained by XDA point to a noticeable overhaul with a redesigned notifications panel, fewer quick settings options, and new conversation widgets for the home screen that highlight messages and missed calls from your contacts and group chats. Meanwhile, if you felt like digging deep into the heart of the developer build settings, there is also an option called Silky Home that enables a new, more compact design for the settings app that should make navigating menus on big phones at least a little bit easier. There's bound to be a lot more about Android 12 we're just not clued in on yet, and Google's I.O. keynote and developer sessions should go a long way in helping to lay out the company's vision for this upcoming year of mobile computing. If Google sticks with pre-pandemic plans, you can expect to see an initial Android 12 public beta release fairly soon after the keynote ends with a full launch around August or September. As usual, we're also expecting to hear a lot about Google Assistant at the show this year, though we haven't really heard many specifics just yet. For what it's worth though, Google noted on its own developer blog that we will see new product announcements and feature updates for the Assistant. And if what we've seen in previous years is any indication, these might be the announcements that steal the show. On sort of a similar note, Google says we can also expect new smart home product announcements too, though it did stop short of specifically saying it would reveal new hardware. We'll just have to see how all of that plays out. We're also starting to get the sense that something is going on with Wear OS this year. I mean, just think about it. Within the last week, at least as I'm shooting this video, Google finally updated its wearable software to support Gboard for easier typing on a tiny touchscreen. And it started soliciting feedback from Wear OS users in a survey that also prompted some people to participate in a research study to inform future platform development. Maybe I'm reading a little too much into the timing here, but with IO right around the corner and Google's acquisition of Fitbit in the rearview mirror, it's starting to feel like the company is getting ready to commit to wearables in a big way. With all of that said though, there's been very little so far to suggest that Google is gearing up to reveal a smartwatch of its own right now. So the most we'll probably see on this front is a handful of big platform announcements. But that's not to say we won't see any new hardware at Google IO this year. In a marketing email that Google spread around back in April, the company showed off a set of green Pixel Buds that didn't correspond to any of the models we'd currently seen on sale. Then Google accidentally leaked the existence of its A-series Pixel Buds in a tweet from the official Android account. So mystery solved, I guess. Maybe those were pure goofs and maybe Google has no intention about talking about its new wireless earbuds anytime soon, but we wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if these things got at least a bit of the IO spotlight. And then there are the long shots, the announcements that we mostly just hope Google makes at the show this year. For one, there is the Pixel 5a 5G, a phone with a bad name that is a more affordable version of last year's Pixel 5. This would normally be the time of year Google shows off a new, more affordable Pixel smartphone, and I'm always in favor of cheap, good stuff. But last year's release of the 4a might have actually thrown off Google's schedule. 
when the company confirmed in early April that the Pixel 5a actually wasn't canceled after all, a spokesperson noted at the time that the new phone would be revealed in line with when last year's A-series phone was introduced. And if you take that at face value, that means we probably won't get our first official looks at Google's cheap new Pixel until late summer. But who knows? I'm keeping my fingers crossed for an I.O. announcement anyway. And while we're talking about pixels, it sure would be nice if Google officially pulled back the curtain on Whitechapel, a homemade mobile processor that we're expecting to debut in the Pixel 6. We could definitely see Google holding off on an announcement for a while, especially since the company has said literally nothing about the Pixel 6 so far, but now would be a smart time to start getting developers on board if they really do plan to go whole hog on their own silicon. And that's pretty much it for what we expect as far as big announcements go from Google I.O. 2021. And I'm well aware that we're only just scratching the surface here. If you have any feedback on our predictions, or if you'd like to throw out a few predictions of your own, we'd love to see them down in the comments. And be sure to join us next week for our live coverage of Google I.O. 2021 so we can all see together how right or wrong we were. See you then.